Is this rubber man anything like that? Like that. Rubber. Yeah. When it's reaction, so when you start, my, my time is our and I'm not having some man and cannot drop a head. I just can't take that. I just can't take that. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Pastor's Corner. It's a joy to be with you today. And with me, I have two of my good friends, but not just good friends, two of the emerging scholars of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And I'm, I'm very much excited to have them with me this morning. On to my far left, I have with me Pastor Samura Bess, and he's the pastor of the Western Two District of, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, to my immediate left, we have Pastor Lambert Paul. He's the pastor of the Southeastern District of the Greener Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And this morning, we have a very interesting subject to discuss with you. Um, I see my good friends already logged in. Um, Francesca Noel, Rolf Ferguson, Anita Johnson. We are, we are happy and excited to have you with us today. And just before we get into today's manna, let us bow our heads as we ask God's presence with us. Father, we bless your name in all the earth. We are thankful, God, for another opportunity where we can discuss, be enlightened, and to share that which you would have blessed us with. Bless our panelists today, Pastor Lambert Paul and Pastor Samara Bess, and all our online viewers. Establish your order as we seek to do your bidding, we ask in Jesus' name. Gentlemen, you can just greet your online audience. So this time I start with Samara Bess. You can see something um, to our friends online. Okay, a pleasant uh, good morning to everyone, um, those of you viewing online. Um, I would have met some persons who are silent viewers, and I just want to um, just say good morning to you. I also want to take the opportunity to wish my mom a happy birthday today as she celebrating her birthday today. That's a good month. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a blessed month, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. it's a blessed month. Oh, yeah. Good things happening this month. Yeah. But good morning to all of the viewers, <laughs> and welcome to Pastor's Corner. Indeed, it's a pleasure to be here, and I hope... As a result of today's um, discussion, you will be blessed by what is presented. Amen, amen. And to my immediate left. Uh, pleasant good morning to everyone. It's a privilege to be here and um, looking forward to going on that journey with you today. And I pray and hope that whatever will be transpired will be a means of drawing us closer to each other and closer to God. So don't, don't forget to you know, invite somebody to be part of that experience today. Amen and amen. Gentlemen, today we're going to discuss a very, very important subject. I think it is a relevant one. And I think it is one that, that many of us need to hear. And that is um, having to do with the theology of forgiveness. The whole idea of forgiveness. I have with me a few questions, gentlemen, um, just to bring some enlightenment to the whole subject of the theology of forgiveness. And the first one, any one of you can, can give us your response in relation to such. Um, what is the significance of forgiveness in Christian theology? The significance, the importance of, of forgiveness in Christian theology. Is it really and truly an important thing to forgive persons as Christians? Any one of you? Good morning. I, well, I, I would begin, and I would just begin by saying, Pastor, that's a very, I think this topic is much needed for our church today. As we would have seen many of our brethren, um, um, they are struggling with the concept, the whole idea of, of forgiveness. Now, um, in relation to the question that you, you asked, I, I would say, Pastor, that you know, forgiveness is a, is a, has a direct connection to our, relation, to our relationship with God and how he extends his grace towards us every time we fall. So, in other words, from when it comes to forgiveness, um, that's a context to which we must view it from. Um, it is also an, uh, an expression of God's love towards us, Pastor, right? And um, we, well, there was a text for guidance there. It says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. 
Right. And so we see from that text there that um, in relations to how we deal with one another, forgiveness is one of the core um, fund foundations that should govern our relationship. And we should be willing, as we see, um, we are doing it based on how God deals with us. Um, we, we are to, um, to, to do it. The text also places Christ as the base and the reason for which we extend forgiveness to each other. Right. To each other Pastor. Powerful, powerful, Pastor Paul. Right, so I think it's, it's really it's re very important. It's quite significant. <coughs> um, because if you, first thing, if you don't receive forgiveness, you won't be able to exercise forgiveness. That's true. All right, because I just want to share a short quotation with you from the book Christ Object, Christ Object Lesson. It says, we, do not for, we, we are not forgiven because we forgive, mm. but as we forgive. Mm. The ground for all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. Amen. But by our attitude toward others, we show whether we have made that love our own. So it's really important to understand that when we extend forgiveness, it's because we receive it. And I, I always like to reflect on that story um, with, um, with Aaron. Aaron was the first one that led the children of Israel away from God. Hmm. He made the calf for them. And after that, he became the first high priest. So he was able to receive God's forgiveness so when others were, um, offended God and they come to him, he was able to deal with them in that certain manner. Sometimes we deal with people rash, harsh, as, as though we are perfect because we ourselves really never experience God's forgiveness. So once you experience God's forgiveness, it really affects your relationship with others because you will exercise that soft or that sympathetic part of the human being. And, and I think it is, you would have um, highlighted a very, very, um, important point and that is for us to give forgiveness we must have received the forgiveness um, it's important to note that and that's very 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 powerful um, with, with this whole ideology yes yes but I just want to <coughs> add um, as we are on it um, I would have added it later but as we hear yes um, I, I, I came to realize that a person can only truly forgive or understand forgiveness only in the light of God's love for 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 themselves and having been a recipient of the grace of God, you, you get a clear understanding as to, hey, look, if God dealing with me in this way, then I should be able to deal with my brother in a similar fashion. Right. But you see nowadays, um, persons holding on to stuff, and as a matter of fact, they're blocking, they're deleting you, and they're just moving away. But I'm just saying, um, forgiveness is a spiritual thing. Right. right. It starts with God, you know, and how he treats us. And, Powerful. And from them. Powerful. But how does the concept of forgiveness, and Pastor Paul, maybe we can start with this one. How does the concept of forgiveness align with the teaching of Jesus Christ? All right. Well, first thing I want to, I want to establish, sometimes as human beings, we put offenses, we give them different grade. So we might say some things are easier to extend forgiveness and some things are harder. Right. Right? So somebody might lie on you. Some person say, well, that is the worst thing somebody could do on me. Once they lie on me, I'm done with them. Yes. Okay. Somebody might say, um, if somebody offend one of my family members, maybe abuse my daughter or my son, then I'm done with them. You know, somebody might say, well, that's a small thing. Um, somebody might say, well, if that one kill my family member, then, you know. So it's different things persons do use to grade offenses as a result of that. Once you have a grade on it, then you receive a certain level of attention or forgiveness. Right. But the Bible says here, for if we forgive men the trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's right. But if you forgive men not the trespasses, neither would your Father forgive your trespasses. Right. Right? So this is really important because it says here, basically what, you, what I just read, is that he's saying here that forgiveness is conditional. Yes. And not conditional, or not, the condition doesn't depend on God, the condition depends on us. Right. Because you receive forgiveness as you give. You say, Father, forgive us, right? Our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right. And there are some persons, they're actively involved in church. Some of them in prayer groups, some of them in prayer ministry. And they're praying and they're asking God for forgiveness every day. But they might have a spouse, they might have a sibling, they might have a neighbor, they might have a member in church that they're not extending forgiveness. Have mercy. So when you behave like that, Based on what the question is asking him, you realize that you are away from the teaching of Jesus. Hmm. Because Jesus' attitude is that all should repent, right? 
his forgiveness is extended to the entire world. And we know the famous scripture, for God so loved the world That's that right. he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Even also he said in Titus 2 and verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all to men. all men. That's so right. everybody have the opportunity. And that's the type of attitude we, we should have once Christ dwells in us, no matter how hard the offense might be, we should be willing to extend that forgiveness. Right. Very, very important. Day. Yes. You, you know, it's, um, you, made a, you, you quoted something from Christ's object lesson a while ago. Can you just reread it again? Um, because I think it's important um, based on what we are, this question. Can, um, you, you, you quoted it a while ago. All right, good. It says here, we are not forgiven mm -hmm. because we forgive, mm. but as we forgive. Mm. The ground of all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. So, right. the, so the, the quote said, we are, not forgive, we are not forgiven because we forgive, but as, meaning it's a continuous thing. It's something that would always have to be um, right. demonstrated as you live. Uh, in, 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 in the Great Commission, um, well, King James probably didn't put it, but it's as you go, make right. disciples of men. The same as you live, you have to forgive people. That's right. Um, the SDA Bible commentary, um, I, I, I took a quotation from there, from the SDA Bible commentary. It says, he who is unwilling to forgive others does not deserve to be forgiven. It says, furthermore, to extend forgiveness to him would be to condone his own forg unforgiving spirit. To expect of others what one is unwilling to do himself is the very essence of selfishness and sin. God's unwillingness to forgive one who harbors an, an, unfor an unforgiving spirit is based on the need of the unforgiving person to overcome a basic character defect. God could not forgive such a person and at the same time be true to his own righteous character. Only when we are right with our fellow men can we be right with God. So, Prisha, based on Amen. this, based on this context, mm -hmm. um, a member might come to you and said, "Well, um, Pastor, I forgive her, but I, I, <laughs> I'm just keeping my distance. Or uh, um, I don't have nothing against her. You know, the, the, yes, those, those <laughs> like, I don't have nothing against her, but indeed, and in the fact, mm -hmm. something is not right. Mm -hmm. Can a Christian? Can we really and truly be a Christian and not forgiving somebody?" Well, well, based, forgive somebody rather. Based on the quotation, um, you see that's a character defect, right? Um, and 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 it has implications, implications to the point that um, you are withholding yourself from even experiencing the forgiveness of God. Now, for persons who would say, um, Pastor, I, I forgive, but I I keep in my boundary. I, I would ask this person some cool questions. Um, if you are called upon to help this person. In a genuine way, would you do that? Right. Um, do you still say good morning? The, you know, the courtesies. Because I believe um, true forgiveness, um, though there are some relationships, um, um, preacher, that when you experience certain things, you would have to stay away um, based on, on how it went. But at right. the same time, if forgiveness is genuine, you should not be harboring any malice or ill feeling towards the person in your heart. In a genuine, I'm speaking from a genuine context, not no play yes, thing. Yes. Where people we playing and thing, yeah. Because it, based on the, the, the quotation that Mrs. White would have penned for us, mm -hmm. when you look at it, it is clear that forgiveness is not just an action. Correct. And you, I think you make reference to that. It is an innate something that when we are born with Christ, mm -hmm. it is automatically imbued in you. Correct. And hence, we can live continually with it. Mm -hmm. But if we have forgiveness as this thing that is waiting, that if that brother wronged me, and based on the level of wrong that he wrongs me, then I forgive him, that is not forgiveness. You're only exercising an act. An act. So forgiveness has to be always come from that stream of Christ, the love of Christ, which constrains us. Yes, you and, want to and say preacher, something? Um, it, forgiveness does not remind people of the past mistakes. In that, if I say that I forgive you, preacher, um, probably two, two, two days after you, you, you do something wrong to me again, Preacher, I don't have to bring back up what you did the first that, time. That is right. No, if I say I forgive you, then why are you using it now as ammunition to that, further um, make you feel bad or condemn you or to talk? No, I forgive you and I move on. That is right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Pastor Paul has something to say on that. <laughs> I, wanna, I, I, I wanna know this will something. be a bit interesting subject, <laughs> so we're going. Right. So you know what I want to add? The definition of forgiveness. Go ahead. Right? It says, forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim 
undergoes a change in feelings and attitude regarding an offense. Hmm. He doesn't stop there. Let's go of negative emotion such as revenge with an increased ability to wish the offender well. You see, you see, when you forgive somebody and some negative thing befall them, you don't say, I know God would have dealt with them. Yeah, that's the point. Right? <laughs> you, they meet in an accident, I know God would have dealt with them. They, they, the child didn't do well in school, I tell you, I know God would deal with them. No, no, no. You don't rejoice you, in the person. No, you're not rejoicing and, um, in the person's pain and, pain and, so, and yeah. so on. Because at that point, when you forgive the person, you're not wishing the offender well. And it's intentional, it's voluntary. You don't have to force anybody to forgive. If you have to force somebody, then it's not forgiveness. It is not forgiveness. No, it's not forgiveness. It's not forgiveness. It's just like children, they push you on and say, come, say sorry. You, you and know, they will just say sorry because... Yeah. I see Sister Karen is asking a question. We, we should forgive, but should we forget? It, well, I was going to talk to that, you know. Um, you know, preacher, it's, it's hard to forget. It's hard. It's, it's hard. very hard to forget. Hard to forget. Um, people don't just forget stuff just so. Um, but you could forgive that's what, the, that's what we are getting at. Um, because there are certain things that may happen to you in your life. Um, you, you, 10, 5, 15 years, but you remember them because that's, that it's, it's a right. major um, thing in, in, in your life and the mind, it keeps it there. But it's very difficult to forget. So I can't tell people um, this saying about forgive and forget is really thing. But I do believe, however, um, as you practice the whole idea of forgiving and letting go of the situation, I believe, you know, um, there could come a time where you will somewhat forget that thing, you know. Because I was thinking on it, Pastor, today. I know you really want to see. Yeah. But I was thinking on it, Preacher. And I was just reflecting on how many times me and my best friend fought as a young fella growing up. And some of the things that you can't even remember, you know, like if he come now today and say, boy, you remember when the small we fight? Some of those things you can't remember. So, but it comes from being genuine first. You have to genuinely say, I go let go of these things. And, you know, but it is very difficult and hard to forget, preacher. I just want right. to make that That's point. Right. Pastor Paul, what's right. the, what's the So, comment? this question people just always ask that, right? As human beings, we wouldn't really just forget what the person has done. That's not the point. The point is, even though you remember, mm. it wouldn't bring any ill feelings. Shouldn't right. feel, yeah. Right? Because, like, for example, when I was small, <coughs> um, smaller going to primary school, um, in the park, I threw a rock over the wall and it busts um, one of my classmates' head. Right? She grew up, well, you know, I did what I have to do, you know, to help and so on. After that, she grew up and she, we became really, really good friends. And mm -hmm. the other time she was home and she mother, um, my mother asked her, what happened to your head? She said, so you didn't know your son busts my head? Because mm -hmm. that wasn't reported and my best friend covered yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had yeah. to go and bring her by the doctor and everything. Yeah. He covered him. So I home like nothing happened. And we became good friends, even as adults. We are good friends. Right. Mm -hmm. So even though the mark is there, she remember what happened. But forgetting is not that. It's when you see the person, you have that kind of tightening of the face. So we come into that, the tightening of the face. You can't sleep in the night. Mm, when you right. see them in church, you're vexed. When you walk in the street, you're changing side. You, mm -hmm. Them kind of forget you're talking about. You remember in it, but when you remember it, it brings you across that bitterness, that that, that revenge, that if I hold you, you know, I, I, I God go deal with you, I just waiting to see your downfall. No, that's not the kind I remember. I glad you, I glad you, you, you take that approach because sometimes um, person, you will hear some person saying, forgive and forget, but you can't really actually forget. Um, and you're right, we have to avoid um, the dominant thought of revenge mm -hmm. to be evaded from our minds. You want, you want that, that thought is there. Oh, I see her again, she, the crook. <laughs> and then now, revenge start taking place in that mind as to what you should do. But no, you will remember, but at the same time, you will say, thank God for his grace. Yeah. Thank God for his grace. So it's not that it will be erased from your mind. As a matter of fact, I was sharing with one of my churches there that one, I borrowed some, some, an individual some funds. And, and you know those individuals that like to say next week and always next week and the next week is just kicking the can down the road. And one day I just decided to say, Father... Before that thing causes us to be enemy, let me just confront them. Let me just let them know, don't bother. But don't go ahead and borrow funds from persons again and do them that. The Bible, and it's, it's members. The Bible totally against it. And I had to confront them. I said, look me, it's not that I really and truly need it, because of course, I mean, but the principle behind it is that you must do the honorable thing. Mm -hmm. And don't tell somebody Friday when Friday comes, 
you ain't seen him yeah. because the person going to have yeah. ill feelings and i have to say lord before i cause the person to continue to sin and sin and sin let me just close the door here and, and cause them to see if they can make a change in, in the in the mode but i like the fact that we forgive individual it would not be erased but at the same time the grace of god is what dominates our minds so in as much as we are seeing what they would have done 10 years along the road we're thanking god for his grace gentlemen so much on this the third the third question i want to ask of us here and I know this subject will be a very long one. <laughs> Can forgiveness be unconditional? Mm. Or are there conditions that must be met? Lord have mercy. <laughs> no, I, I, I am asking this one and it's a sad one. Is there any condition that should be met for us to tell somebody that we're sorry and, and, and move on as brethren? <laughs> Ella laugh. Right. So, um, <laughs> so, so basically, right? You see... I want, I want to say that that, that, that that platform here, straight. Forgiveness is not only for the offender. Uh, I want to say it again. For the mm -hmm. so, forgiveness is not only for the offender, mm -hmm. right? But the one who is offended as well. That's right. Because <laughs> the thing about it, watch me, listen. If, if you hold, listen, all right, unforgiveness, let me, let me just put in that one time. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping for another person to die. Mm. You drinking poison and hoping that other person will die from the poison that you drink. That is what unforgiveness is. Mm -hmm. So when you, we, we plan to touch some on it, but let me just touch some simple. When you hold forgiveness, right, from somebody, you get high blood pressure. Mm. You can't sleep, mm -hmm. right? And other things that we will talk about a little later on. So, Waiting for somebody to meet conditions to extend forgiveness to them, you're in problems. Right? Mm -hmm. Because there are some persons who never say they're sorry. You know, you know the interesting thing about us, even as Christians and individuals, for God already extends forgiveness to the human reason. Mm -hmm. We just have to come and accept it. Forgiveness <laughs> is a gift. So if it's there and you didn't accept it, the offender doesn't benefit. Mm -hmm. But right. the one who extending it doesn't mean that they won't benefit. So Pastor Best does something to me. And I didn't like it. And in my mind, I don't have anything against him. Right? But there is a, there is a, a process in extending forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You should not just lay back and say, well, I ain't have nothing against him. Yeah. But, but here what happened. Here what happened. You don't have anything against him, but every time you show up, when you're in a conversation with other people, you get silent. Mm. Are they going? Or you walk away. Yeah. It means you're toting feelings. Mm. And you have to, as Pastor Peter said, confront the offender and let them know what you did offended me, affected me in that way. I want us to fix it. Mm -hmm. Because just staying quiet and sitting on the next corner of the church and avoiding them when you see them, that wouldn't fix it. So I'll pause there for now. So therefore, as I thought on it, I, I have a slightly different take. Right. <clears throat> Based on what Pastor Paul said, and I'm looking at the text that was associated with it. Um, Luke, I want, us to, I want to just read the right, text. You can Luke, read. Luke 17, um, 3 and 4. It says, be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him or warn him. Right. Right. Um, and if he repents, forgive him. Right. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. Well, um. To me, brothers and bishop, mm -hmm. I, I, I think there are some, some, one might say steps, or I could say conditions, yeah. Um, the condition, go ahead, Pastor. I want to no, interject. But, but, Why I want to let, interject? Let, let, <laughs> the reason I want to interject, because the text is saying, brothers, uh -huh. right, right. there are some psychotic rhinoceros on the, on the road. <laughs> <laughs> they will do things and they will never say sorry. But, but the, question, the, the thing is, the, the, the condition... It's not just for the person who offend you, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's for you. Right. You you being offended. Right. There are some steps that need to be taken. Because the, some, the, <laughs> go the ahead. question I would have asked, and, and, and <laughs> the question I want to ask, at what point in time forgiveness is really and truly settled? Is it when I say, Pastor Paul or Pastor Bess, I would have wronged you and I am sorry? Or is it when God is satisfied? Because note well... Mm. There are some persons who, who love to say, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. but deep down, <laughs> yeah. the sorry is no sorry. <laughs> so it has to do, the, the one who puts the final icing on the forgiveness it's cake, God. it has to be God. Yeah. But the action must take place between By me humans, and you. And I, but but is, it then, is it then 
okay for an individual to feel a sense of ease and, and a peace with each other. And deep down with God, forgiveness has not taken place. Because after I leave, Pastor Paul say, tell him sorry, we make up, we hug, we bongs. I went back home and I say, I go and run my mouth and Pastor Paul. Hey, girl, you don't no, know. That can be right. You, that is the point. That can be but right. to Pastor Paul, forgiveness in, took place. In his mind. In his mind. Based on what happened. And based on the presence. action. Yes. God must settle this score Correct. of forgiveness. Because it is a hard thing. Yes. And we established that in the beginning. Correct. That and unless we adopt the principles of God, true forgiveness can't take place. Correct. Correct. We're going we, we to follow in an action, but no forgiveness deeply. Let me share two <laughs> definitions that people use for forgiveness. And none of them is forgiveness, right? Right, right. So what they have, they have the, the hollow forgiveness. Mm. So the hollow forgiveness is person verbally saying, Right. Right? I'm sorry, but secretly harbor in the grudge. Right. Yeah. Right. That is hollow that's hollow forgiveness. That's what I'm speaking yeah. to. So <laughs> people not say they forgive or they go in front of setting in church or whatever because they want to look good. But inside, they bitter. They bitter. They that bitter. is one. The next one is silent forgiveness. People intentionally forgive, but not admitting to the to the forgiveness to the offender. Mm. So we are not we had we had something happen. Yeah, I forgive you, but I never tell you. <laughs> or I tell you I forgive you, but I really don't forgive you. Mm. I don't want nothing against her, but you never told her anything. Exactly. Never confronted her. Nothing against but, but her. But let me ask a question. I mean, yes, I can. know you're the moderator. You can ask a question. You could. You could ask. <laughs> this is what it's about. Um, but isn't both of them somewhat dangerous? Which one? That's it. Both, That's of course. Both, yes. That's of course they're dangerous. dangerous. They're not forgiveness. None of them is not forgiveness. That's For it. forgiveness to take place in relation to the condition, we must confront. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> must do confronting. And we have to be genuine about it. That is it. So we can't stay in, in isolation and say, I've forgiven her. You know? I don't know if she, she thinks I have anything against her. I have nothing. But and, you have to confront. And, and watch it. Why it is dangerous, especially the silent one. The, 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 the silent one is we continue to allow... As, as a brother or a sister to continue with a, a bad trait. Pastor Peters, you made a, an example a while ago in relation to someone that owed you. Yeah. But you decided, listen, I need to speak to that brother. And that's what the text said here in Luke. Rebuke him, warn him, tell him about it. Listen, you did something wrong. Rather than silently saying, I forgive that person for taking my money, you know? Um, but you should tell them, listen, brother, man, or sister, if you continue with that habit, that is it the point. It could cause problem. That is the point. But so, you look, that, so you speak up. <laughs> Ella, forgiveness, and I wish that all of God's people understand this, this whole idea of the theology of forgiveness. Because forgiveness, and I think we would have established that, is both for the offender and the and one if, that is being offended. Like Pastor Paul Because said remember, it. Jesus, mm -hmm. most of the times, we are looking for the offender to come. Correct. But Jesus mm -hmm. tells us, uh-uh, that is not correct. That's Let him who is spiritual mm -hmm. he must go mm -hmm. but i'm not the i'm not the offender now why should i go but watch this also he said if you reach by the altar by the altar and you remember someone, someone has altar, against you you are the altar <laughs> you don't have you the altar. remember somebody so you are the altar and you remember someone have out against you leave your gift and go and make it up. Yeah, so it, it's both ways. It benefits <laughs> yeah. both ways. So both and persons benefit. Because it is spiritual, the mandate is upon all to demonstrate that spirit of forgiveness. And, and, that and is you so would see that there is some measure of communication that has to happen between the two persons or right. whoever um, is there. And But the text also highlights if that person repents seven times, uh, 14 as much as they repent, you're supposed to be demonstrating forgiveness. But that's right, because yeah, it's no? about Christ doing yeah. this thing. No? Because repentance is, is, is genuine. Now, people can... Some folks might say, well, seven. But what I'm saying, people don't just offend us in only one way. There are many different situations that could come, and people um, um, wrong us, and we have to extend forgiveness and so forth. And, beloved, the natural man do not want to forgive. No. Especially <laughs> based on some things that would have been done to you. It's mm. not easy to forgive, and hence... It requires God's power and spirit for us to really and truly forgive some, some cases. That's true. It really and truly requires some. <laughs> but but um, but so that, much on this. Daddy text us going and look for you. Now. <laughs> so much on this. Let, let's look at number four question. I know it's interesting. <laughs> and maybe, maybe we could do a part two in it. How does, the, how does forgiveness relate to redemption and salvation? Mm. Powerful. All, all right. So Go ahead, that, that was, that's, a, that's important because I saw a question. I think high up somebody asked something. We will talk about forgiveness and hell just now. We have that question. We'll talk yes. about it. Um, but I saw somebody ask um, something about forgiveness. And he, how, uh, what's the steps? You see, there are some relationships that needs more than forgiveness. <clears throat> After forgiveness takes place, it calls a reconciliation. Yeah. So that will be a process all by itself. Because mm -hmm. 
you have to try to regain that trust, that confidence in that person who have offended you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a while. It doesn't mean that you did not forgive the person, but now you are going through the process of reconciliation. Because just saying I forgive, yes, you might genuinely mean that, but the hurt, sometimes it might be you, you chose the person so much you left money, exposed to them because you don't think that they will do that and they took some money and, you know, up to that point, they still not admitting or they admit, but mm -hmm. you, you thought to yourself, well, I had that level of confidence in you. Mm -hmm. So now, if they come by you, you might have certain restrictions, places they could go, and so on. So now you have to take time to develop that kind of trust in the person again. Somebody might say, well, you ain't, you ain't forgive the person. Yes, I forgive the person, but you got to be wise. That's right. And, um, why, and on this point, Pastor, and I think you, you touch a very um, hot iron here. Um, forgiveness does not mean rec reconciliation, and this is what Pastor is saying. It doesn't mean that because I forgive you, for example, we were good buddies. Mm -hmm. um, I used to expose three thousand dollars in your in your presence. Yeah, to help the brother. I, I used to expose that, yeah. and at a time it just disappeared. <laughs> you on two occasions, you, <laughs> you 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 stole those funds. It doesn't mean because I forgive you, I must expose three thousand dollars no, again. Oh, yeah, to help the brother. Because exposing the three thousand dollars again yeah, is reconciling, asking me to reconcile back our relationship to what it was. Mm -hmm. Remember, ill feelings and hurt will affect us to some point, but it doesn't mean that we do not forgive you. It does not mean that. It just simply means that you are trying to help the brother, as, as Pastor Ben says, or you are taking some precautionary measures yeah. in not get going back into those levels of hurt. Again, so of course you're going to be careful. If someone runs them out and you have discussion with them and they went back and they squander your name, you wouldn't go back and have those same discussions with them. So you have to take some proactive measures in dealing with the whole aspect of reconciliation. Whether, whether or not you're going to heal, is time alone will tell us, Pastor Lambert is saying. And Pastor, um, in relation to the question again, as we continue the discussion, the whole plan of salvation <clears throat> and redemption is based on forgiveness. That is right. God forgiving us for what we would have done wrong. Um, we discussed earlier the spiritual implications that an unforgiven heart has towards a person who, who's harboring such characteristic um, traits. So it therefore we can therefore conclude, in a nutshell, that if we continue like that, it ha could have some serious, even eternal um, implications in relation to our salvation and redemption. So it is important for us to really understand that the quicker we can forgive somebody, the better for us. In the genuine sense, when, I'm, when we speak here, we're speaking genuinely. The quicker we get over it, we, we reach out, we extend forgiveness and so to people, the better. Because we don't own life, I'm preacher. And if we, I mean, God is ultimately the, the judge of people's salvation, where they go and so forth. But if we die harboring a trait, as we would have established, that is not godly, then it puts us in a very much compromising position. So we want to um, make sure that between ourselves and God, there is nothing that could hinder our relationship with him. And that is so true. And the Bible says if we regard iniquities in our heart, mm -hmm. the Lord will not hear us. Mm -hmm. The Lord will not hear us. Folks, we have to take a little break here oh for boy. our special music. I know I see Pastor Paulus coming up there. <laughs> but we have to break for our special item of music at this time. I know I know you are enjoying it thus far. You two can submit your questions and see. we will try to uh, answer it as much as possible. So let us pause for special music at this time. I believe that Jesus lives where there is Bon. 
Our hearts begins to fall, and as the ability grows weak, but Jesus meets our needs if we only believe for that. Beloved, it's for that special rendition. Um, brethren, thus far, we are having a great time discussing the subject of the theology of forgiveness. And it is so interesting that we are spending some time on, on every question here. Hopefully, maybe we'll have a part two. And note well that you can also submit your question to us, and we will try as much as possible to see if we can bring enlightenment to it. Gentlemen, we are back. On, on to the whole business of the theology of forgiveness again. Mm -hmm. and, and this one that I'm going to ask you here is a mind-boggling one as well. And that has to do with, in what ways does forgiveness contribute to spiritual and emotional healing? Spiritual and emotional healing. Forgiveness, we're talking about. Well, um, Pastor, <coughs> I, I want to say, um, you know when one, I saw, it, I saw someone placed it there. And I just want to read it. They said, good morning to everyone, including the pastors. When we forgive, we feel better. Yes. So it, it therefore means that when you don't forgive, you can't feel good. You can't, <laughs> you can't feel better. You can't feel good. But on a serious note, though, um, when one really expresses and, 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 and experiences that spiritual and emotional freedom that comes with, um, with extending forgiveness in a genuine and authentic way, um, it puts you in a better position um, to relate to God. Um, first and foremost, and it puts you in a better position um, emotionally. As we were speaking earlier on, we, we, um, some 
instances was cre- um, presented where, you know, you say you forgive or you hold in an unforgiving spirit. And then when the person comes around, you start feeling sick. You start feeling um, emotional. Your emotions just move from happy to vex, anger one time. So it therefore means that that person or that situation has power over you. Right. But when you extend forgiveness, right, um, it gives you an opportunity to take your power back. You know, be in control of your, your emotions. Be, be free to, to, to be happy, to, to smile again, as we would say. And, and as I said earlier, yeah, just to relate to your God in a peaceful, um, uninterrupted um, um, way. So as you do that, um, I think it, it contributes to your spiritual and emotional health in those areas. That's right. That's true. Pastor Paul? All right. So um, <clears throat> unforgiveness could kill you. Hmm. And... <laughs> There are a lot of persons, your neck stiff, your shoulder tight, Stress. your head always hot in you, you can't get a good sleep because you think to yourself that when I do not forgive the person, you're doing them a bad. Mm. But I just tell people, you, you hold in that gift for yourself and for the person, but the person doesn't even care about you. Mm. So you in the night up because you're upset over that person, right? So you can't sleep properly. And that person snowing so hard, they're waking up the neighbor. Mm. So they're enjoying a good sleep, but you can enjoy one. So let me tell you something. Mm. So harboring unforgiveness can show up as stress in our bodies. Tensions. Mm. Headaches. Mm-hmm. Stomach aches. Insomnia. And in our moods, we're irritable. Frustrated. Anger. Resentment. Negative outlook. It gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Mm. Listen, also the emotional impact, living in a state of stress and unforgiveness, a lack of trust, broken, strained relationship, anger, irritation, depression, and anxiety, unforgiveness. And the physical result of living in a state of stress might be headaches and tension and all those different things. So basically, when you refuse to forgive somebody and you think, well, me, I ain't had nothing to do with them again. Hmm. They could pass and call me. I don't answer in them. You think you're doing them a, a bad, right? Mm. But actually, you, you're killing yourself. It is true. It is true. Because, the, uh, and you mentioned it, that guilt kills. When we have a guilt in our heart and living with that, that is like an extra load of wet sand in our local palanx we see that you are carrying. People's load you are carrying with mm. you. And I think somebody alluded to the fact that when we are forgiven, when you know that you, the process of forgiving, forgiveness has taken place, you feel light. Yeah. You feel relief. You feel right. so happy. Oh, man, that's sister been talking for how much years and God really, I thank God so very much. It relieves some tensions. It relieves some your stress level. And it causes you to, to live longer. In case we don't know, forgiveness elongates our life. Yeah. And, and therefore, we must get involved in the whole act of forgiveness more. More so. Yes, Pastor Bess. And also, Pastor Peter, as well, and Pastor Paul would have highlighted some of the negatives. Right? I, I just want to point <laughs> out a few positives. You have healthier relationships. Um, that's a positive. Improve mental health. You know, these days, everything, everybody talking mental health. Right. You know, we in, improve that less anxiety, stress, and hostility. All that is benefits of um, forgiveness. Fewer symptoms of depression. Lower blood pressure. A stronger immune system. Pastor, it improves your heart health. Right. Right. <laughs> um, improve self-esteem. We're speaking about forgiveness and how it affects the, the, the mind and, and whatever affects the mind affects the body. And so we see when you um, practice forgiving, those are the healthy benefits that um, some of the healthy benefits that we can experience as a result of, of doing such. So brethren and friends, if there is someone out there that you may be harboring some, um, some ill feeling and you have not yet practiced or, or reached out to forgive that person, I think you should do so. Because it, it has spiritual and physical benefits to you. So you would want to capitalize on that, Pastor Peter. And that, that is true, Pastor. And um, also to add to that, in case you believe that they are the wrong one, mm. when it comes to forgiveness, there is no wrong and right. Correct. All of us are wrong before the sight of God. And therefore, ask God for his Holy Spirit strength to be with you as you, you say you're sorry, even though you were wrong. I say you were saying something. Yes, yeah, so to I want to give an experience that um, I had. Um, when I was in Trinidad, there was a sister. She lost her son. One of the guys in the community shot him mm-hmm. right in the community there and killed him. His brother, you know, tried to accompany him to the hospital, but he died while his brother was holding him. And um, they were neighbors, huh? They were neighbors. 
So she said for a period of time, the lady, son who died, she's a member of the church, right? She said for a period of time, every time the, the, the son of the, of the, the, um, the mother of the son who, who killed her son mm -hmm. saw her, she would change the side of the road and she would drop her head. She began the same community, so you carry on from that. Yeah. She said that happened for, for a while, and then she said, well, no. So there was a time she saw her on the road, and while they was coming towards each other, the lady changed side. She said she changed side too, and she walked right up to her, and she said to her, I know that you did not send your son to kill my son, and I have nothing against you. Right. And the lady was like, <sighs> A burden was lifted. Yeah. A burden was because lifted. Yeah. even though the sister did, did not have anything against her, she had to extend forgiveness because the offense, the, 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 the offense affected the family. Yes. yes. And the lady thought to herself, because my son did it, I am guilty as my son is mm. guilty. Mm. Right. So she just distanced herself from the lady. Mm. So as a result of that, even though the forgiveness was already in the sister's heart, the lady never benefited. Mm. So forgiveness is a gift. When you have forgiveness for somebody, you have to extend that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But you see, when we're talking forgiveness and we're talking from a Christian perspective, it's difficult. Yeah, we have to right? agree with that. And we have to do it differently to how the world does it. Right? Hear what Jesus says. Jesus says here in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Mm. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Come on. Bless them that curse you. Come on. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Mm. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and his sinner to reign on the just and on the unjust. Mm -hmm. Watch it now. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? So if we're only treating persons good who treat us good, yeah. and those who offend us, we can't treat them good, we're not ready yet. Hmm. That, is, that, mm -hmm. is, that is the Bible. That, that, that Bible. draws a line. And the Bible considers that heaping coal upon the head. Mm -hmm. So somebody offend you, and you're still reaching out for them. You're still helping them. You still, you know, if you see them in need, you you will take care of them, take care of their children, because you understand what they are doing. They are not doing it by their own power. The devil behind it, you and because right. the Christ in you, you have to show the person that the devil in you is is not as strong as the Christ in me to give you that type of love. Amen. Amen. You know, you quoted that text, and um, I just want to talk on the text because. Some people use that text as a, as a means of attack. So they hear heaping coals on the head. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, they're just trying to do in their mind what they term is good. Right. But the whole concept here is not just doing good for somebody. It's forgiving from, uh, right. you know, letting it go, being authentic. And, you know, because people here, well, when you do that, you're heaping coals on the head. And it's like, all right, I will heap some coals on that person's head. But the whole idea, as you as you rightfully said, preacher, um, in the demons, in the um, in the story that you give is just genuinely um, um, forgiving people and Amen. Letting, letting go of it. Okay, gentlemen, let's let's move. Number six question that I have here. Um, I have just over ten minutes with you again. What role does repentance um plays in the process of forgiveness? Repentance turning away. Well, the thing, about, the thing about that, right? As the, as the offended one, not the offender, right? You cannot or you do not have control over the offender, right? You only have control over yourself. And if someone comes to you and they say that they're sorry, you can say, well, I want to see if you change force. <laughs> because, yeah. yeah, we don't have control over that. If the fact that the person comes and they say that they're sorry... You know, um, and sometimes we tell God we're sorry and we do it again and we do it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So, if you decide, because repentance, all right, let me start. The repentance is turning away from what you've done, right? And with the attitude that I would not do that again. So, I'm turning away from it. So, somebody come to you and they say that they're sorry. And you say, well, let me see if you change first and then I will forgive you. But that's not the way Christ operates. Mm. Right. Because there are some people who would offend us and they're not even Christians. Mm. But they're sorry. And because in the nature to do them kind of wicked things, they might do it again. Because in the nature to say certain things, they might say it again. Even sometimes it happens in church. Mm. And you say that person, they're always saying this kind of hurtful thing. And they only come in and say they're sorry, they're sorry, they're sorry. So you refuse to forgive them. Mm. But 
That's not the way God operates. Right. Right? <clears throat> so we cannot determine that for the other person. However, we have the responsibility as Christians to extend forgiveness as we receive it from God. And if we want God to forgive us and we want to have a good relationship with God and with, uh, with, with, with um, one another, we have to have the attitude of forgiveness. That's right. Right? And we as Christians, as individuals, when we offend each, um, one another or when we offend God, we have to repent and turn away from it. We have to try not to offend God again, not to offend one another again, and try to move forward in a new light. Right? right. That's the power that we have. We don't have power over somebody else. Yeah, I think um, Pastor Paul would have um, spoken well on it, so we can move on from there. Yeah, like the, the process, though, because some, for some persons, and we, have, we are seeing this thing ever so often, we are going to God and ask God to forgive us. Mm -hmm. But the process of repentance, in some cases, starts with one, an individual has to say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Remember Jesus said, if you Re cannot that's forgive. Recognition. That's right. If yeah. Jesus says, if you cannot forgive mm -hmm. the one whom you are seeing, Oh, yeah, yeah. How then you expect God, God in heaven yeah. to forgive you? Yeah. We're speaking in the context of repentance here. So sometimes we think, oh, all what we have to do is just go to God. But sometimes your first move must, must be to the brother yeah, yeah, yeah. that is sitting right next to you. Yes. Because if we would not, do not want to make it right with him, definitely God wouldn't want to make it right with us in the kingdom of heaven. Well, let me just, so it's imperative. Let me yes, just yes, add yes, Adam preacher. Um, Acts 3 and verse 19. Yes. That's, that text is there. Um, that was Peter. He preached and so forth. And the people right. responded now. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do to be saved? He said, repent. Right. Ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right. Um, so it, 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 the text shows us Peter was asking, the people was asking him, but well, what shall we do now to be saved since this Jesus that we kill? Is really the Messiah, the Lord, right? You know, the king. So he tell them, repent. But you notice he also said, repent and be converted, meaning there's a change that a comes process. with um when you repent. You're supposed right. to change, of from, course, try your best to change from that, that of habit. Course. Of course, we know some people battle with certain things longer than the other, but make efforts, make strides, and along with the persevering presence of the Holy Spirit, um, make that change. And so, um, the whole idea is when you recognize you do something that hurts people, partner, change, repent, That's for, right. ask God for forgiveness, ask, ask, God ask to change people your for forgiveness, ask, ask God, God to change your heart. Don't go continue hurting people. Yeah, before, don't just be before, hurting. Before you run, I want to share something again. <laughs> you know? Right? I have, a, I have a whole sermon on that. Forgive, um, forgive to live. And um, there is a story that I came across. It's a true story happening in South Africa um, with the racism and all them different mm. things. And there was a, a man, they call him Van de Broek. And he had his, his um, entourage with him, uh, his cohort. And they used to go around persecuting and, and, and taking advantage of the black people. And there was a time he went to a woman's house. He, um, he killed her son, point blank. He shot, her, shot him in front of the, the parents. And then after a few months after he went back, he took the woman's husband and she missed the husband for some months. Hmm. Then he came and he took the woman and he brought her by the riverside where they had the husband tie up and some stock, stick about to catch, light him a fire. They did that. The husband died, so she lost her husband, she lost her son. In other words, she lost her family. They caught up with him, brought him to court, and then they asked her what she wanted to do with Van de Broek and all the others who was there. They were victim of, of the, the persecution and, and the wickedness that, that the white officers were doing. And she said, I have three requests. So the court get quiet because they gave her the, the, the authority to make the ruling. Mm -hmm. She said, the first thing I want him to know is that the first thing I want, I want him to bring me back which where my husband was born so I can get his ashes and give him a proper burial. So she has three requests. Mm -hmm. The second one, she said that I want him to come to my house twice a week so I can give him the last bit of love I have remaining. Mm -hmm. By the time she said that, he fainted. Mm -hmm. And the last request she said is mm -hmm. that, the last request she said is that I want you to go, ac I want to go across the room and to embrace him and to let him know that I forgive him. And immediately the courtroom went up in an uproar, singing that hymn, Amazing Grace. Mm. Right? And, and you can only extend that type of forgiveness when you come in contact with God. And, when, and that's why sometimes we, we are, our sins are hidden. You know, um, sometimes we're not so exposed. And that's why sometimes when people come out from the wall and they've been 
bruised and battered. They just love God more than people who are there in church long, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. because we always shield it. But when you understand what sin has done to you and who you was and who you are today, you when people offend you, you're quicker to extend forgiveness to them so because you experience the forgiveness of God. Um, All right, gentlemen, we have five more minutes, and I right. want to slip in another question here. And, uh, go ahead. Because we have some important one here. One, one, one that I think that I can choose from the lot that I have left is, can forgiveness coexist with justice? Yes, sir. How do they interact? Yes, Ooh, yes. Justice say on one <laughs> hand, this is what you deserve, you must pay. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness say, go in peace and sin no more. How does justice and forgiveness well, coexist together? It coexists in the love of God. In the love of God. For mankind. Because really and truly, preacher, I, I must bring it there. You know, we started there. Right. So I would end there. Um, we deserve death. We deserve death. We deserve death, you know. Um, but we see forgiveness in the form of Jesus came. And, and while justice is, was carried out, you know, he died for us. We were the recipients of forgiveness. Right. Um, so the whole idea is um, forgiveness should never um, dissuade the whole course of justice, you know, because there are some things that may just be out of your hands, you understand, depending on the nature of stuff. But, um, for example, if someone, um, well, I do have a child, or, or someone rapes somebody's daughter and, they are, you know, they, that person goes into prison, um, it may just be the best thing for the, the victim, the, the offended, you know, to still express or extend forgiveness to that person as a, as a means of, as we spoke earlier, healing and moving forward. But justice will take its course. Right. And um, justice will take its course, and there's no real challenge with that, but you are able to still um, extend forgiveness and move on. Um, so true. In, 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 in a good and loving manner. And Pastor Paul's story, um, illustration, I think demonstrated that whole concept very well with the lady giving the three um, last desires or wishes right. and what she decided to do with it. Pastor Paul. So let me tell you. Justice and forgiveness. <laughs> quickly. God told Adam and Eve, in the day that you eat from the tree mm. of knowledge of good and, and, good and evil, you, sh you shall surely die. They did. And God said in Genesis 3 and verse 15. Mm, preach it. I, I put enmity. Yeah. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between her seed and thy seed. Mm. Right? You know the text. That's where the plan of salvation was first stated. And then he said to them, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, he says, and God put the man and the woman outside the garden. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he put an angel with a flaming sword Come to on. guard them from the tree of life. Mm -hmm. You messed up. I forgive you. I put things in place for you, but you have to pay the price. Mm -hmm. You do the crime, pay the time. Must pay the time. Yes. That's right. So even though they messed up, he extends forgiveness. Yes, I still love you. I will send my son to die. He will come and he will die. Mm -hmm. But out of the garden, mm. this place is not for you again. And even though you can see right now, even in, Je in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, he said, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter into the gates of the city. So we see the mercy, we see the love, and even when Christ comes, if we refuse to accept, accept him now, we will see mercy and forgiveness exercise again. Amen and amen. And, and I, I want to believe, like the Apostle Paul, this is the mystery of godliness that mm -hmm. do it already work. Mm -hmm. um, knowing on one hand, God is saying, I, I release, release you. And on one hand, he's saying, I will hold you accountable. That's only God can demonstrate such to us. But today we have grace, you know, and... Um, I trust that by God's grace, as we seek to wrap up this segment, that we will allow God's spirit, viewers online, to dwell within and amongst us. I see Katie, you are, you are alluding um, to the point that we would have highlighted earlier. She says that, finally, she says, sometimes we have to forgive and love some folks from a distance. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to the idea of forgiveness and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Whereas reconciliation requires two persons. Because for me and Bess to have a good relationship, both of us must have that consent to have that good relationship whereas forgiveness and and we didn't touch that but there are some folks who puts up a resistance mm -hmm. they don't want to hear you they don't want to come close to that they don't want to have nothing to do with you forgiveness does not depend upon how an other individual think about you you must ensure that you have the heart of forgiveness yeah. and therefore whereas re reconciliation needs two-way street forgiveness needs only one way mm -hmm. it must come from your heart it must be genuine it must be god directing as opposed to reconciliation. And as we, we highlighted, it's not all of the times forgiveness takes place. Reconciliations take place. Not all of the times. 
Because you are a good friend and the friend hurts you to an extent that you, you forgive them. You all still talk, but not on the same vein and same level that we once used to. It doesn't mean that you didn't forgive them. It doesn't mean. So, viewers, we are thankful. We are thankful that you were with us today. And um, Pastor Bessie, can you just final, just a few seconds, say something finally to the brethren and Pastor Paul, and then we pray and close. Well, if, I, if someone is having a challenge today with um, extending <coughs> forgiveness uh, towards persons, um, it's a spiritual matter, as we said earlier, and it's something that you can pray about, and God will give you um, the strength to do so. But you also have to be willing and I want to leave you the text which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a pause in a few seconds. If somebody offend you, or you offended somebody, first thing, ensure that you pray about it, but confront the situation. Do not keep silent. Don't distance yourself because you wouldn't get healing. And it would be sad to know that you have held that person in your heart for so long, and you're praying for forgiveness, and you're not forgiven. And when Jesus comes, you're lost. Confront the situation. Talk about it. Talk to it. And may God grant you that healing and that strength to get that um, problem solved. Thank you. Amen and amen. And re remember, beloved, never there is a condition where you should extend forgiveness to the other. Remember Jesus Christ himself. We fail him every day. But yet for all, he still pleads to the Father, have mercy upon them for my blood was shed for them. May God grant unto us the strength that we need to ensure that we demonstrate Christ-likeness through forgiveness to our beloved brothers and sisters that we may come into contact with. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father, again, we thank you so very much for enlightening us today. We are thankful for the information that was shared. We are thankful for our audience in a marked way. Please, God, it might be a difficult subject. It might, there might be some stuff that is difficult to accept. But we ask for your Holy Spirit will to go with us as we seek to do your bidding. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have yourself a wonderful day and may God bless you richly.